Hello everyone, and welcome to Galaxy 89 Cars. Today, thanks to Letchworth Cupra, I'm taking you on an in-depth exterior and interior tour and exhaust sound video of this 2020 Seat Cupra Ateca Limited Edition. Cupra Letchworth had this for sale at the time of filming, and still have many high specification cars for sale at the time of publishing, and all of their contact details can be found in the description of the video. Cupra, which has recently separated from Seat to become its own standalone brand, was Seat's high performance division that took the standard Seat cars, such as the Ateca, and enhanced them. Based on the standard Cupra Ateca, this limited edition car comes with new carbon fibre exterior pieces and interior design elements. In total, 1,999 will be built, with 100 units coming to the UK, and only 20 of these having the optional Akrapovic exhaust system that's fitted to this car. I will make comparisons to the standard Cupra Ateca throughout the video to highlight these differences. Here finished in the limited edition only graphene grey, this car comes in at 4,380mm long, 1,840mm wide, 1,600mm high, and comes with a curb weight of 1619kg. We can now move to the powertrain. To see the engine, we first need to unlatch the bonnet by putting the lever found to the left of the passenger's footwell. We can then move around to the front and press the small lever to fully unlatch the bonnet. The bonnet then needs to be self-supported by manually putting the stand up. This Cupra Teca Limited Edition is powered by a turbocharged front-mounted 4-cylinder 2.0-litre petrol engine that produces 296 brake horsepower and 400Nm of torque. This output results in a 0-62 mph or 100km per hour time of 4.9 seconds, quicker by 0.3 seconds, and an unchanged top speed of 152mph. Once finished in the front, the stand needs to be returned to its original position, and then the bonnet can be closed. Now moving down to the corners, we find new, 1 inch bigger front and rear alloys with copper accents, 20 inches all round. In from these, we also find larger, drilled, 370mm Brembo sports brakes. Stability is provided by the car's 4-drive all-drive system that is based on independent McPherson-type front shocks with coil springs, and a multi-link setup at the rear, also with coil springs. At both ends, we also find hydraulic shocks for the car's adaptive damping system that can be adjusted by altering the drive modes, which we'll see later. Now we've finished the model overview, we can start the exterior tour from front to back. As with the standard Cupra Teca, we find Cupra text on the bottom air intake grille. Then moving laterally, we find the same gloss black intakes for the cold air radiators. Above these, we find faux intakes that contain sensors for the parking assist system. Then moving back in, we come to the main gloss black intake grille that contains further sensors and the front parking camera. This area is also unchanged. Moving up, the partial intake remains the same, but we find a new carbon Cupra badge affixed to it. On either side, we find the new generation of Seat full LED dynamic lighting that consists of full LED main beams and daytime running lights. These are also featured in the stand Cupra Teca. Moving up, we come to the unchanged bonnet and windscreen further back with its two wipers. Continuing back, we come to the long, flat roof that comes with racks on either side as standard, a feature also shared with the standard Cupra Ateca. We can now move down to the car's lateral aspect. At the bottom, we find a partial length gloss back side skirt, which is shared with the standard car. However, when we move up, we come to the new carbon fibre mirror caps with standard integrated indicators underside cameras for the park assist system and blind spot assist LEDs. Below and along from the mirrors are the unchanged thick keyless entry door handles. As we continue along the side of the car, we eventually come to the fuel cap for the fuel tank. It can easily be opened and closed with a light press. Ateca has a 55 litre fuel tank with the non-limited edition cars returning a combined MPG of 38.2. Moving back up, we come to the roof spoiler that sits just back from the shark's fin antenna. The roof spoiler is also a standard feature, but here a new carbon extension is fitted to it to provide a more sporty aesthetic. And below this, we find the standard LED brake light. Continuing down, we come to the relatively slim tinted rear window with its single wiper. Below and on either side of these, we come to the Seat Lighting full LED rear light complexes that wrap around the sides for enhanced visibility. Then, moving back in and between these, we find a new carbon Cupra badge with a reversing camera below it. Below this, we come to the unchanged rear bumper with its five faux vents at the top that come with integrated parking sensors. There's an unchanged gloss back diffuser section below with the new exhaust system protruding on either side. 
The exhaust system featured here is the new valve-controlled Akropovich exhaust that saves 7 kilograms over the standard system and only comes on 20 cars in the UK. And we'll be able to hear it later in the video. Now we've completed the exterior tour, we can move inside. Cupra Ateca comes with a standard Cupra fob that offers controls for lock, to open the boot lid, to unlock and a deployable physical key. Once unlocked, the large handles can be grabbed easily and used to pull the door out smoothly. As with the exterior, this limited edition variant comes with new features in the interior, such as new bucket seats with blue Alcantara. I will cover everything as we progress, but we can start the in-depth interior tour with the doors. The top starts in the same way as in the standard car, with a flat surface that rolls over. Below it, we also find the same door release with interior lock and unlock controls. Underneath, the same gloss black trim remains, but now we find blue instead of black Alcantara lining below it. As we continue down, we find the same wide padded armrest, with controls for all electric windows and the electric wing mirrors above. Finally, we come to the large open storage area and ahead of it, the door speaker from the 8 speaker system. Lowered by 20mm over the standard Ateca, Cupra still offers good ground clearance and easy ingress and egress thanks to quite a slim sill. Now moving along the sill, we find a light finished kick plate with illuminated Cupra text. As we move up, we find an access panel, the exterior light controls and first manly adjustable air vent surrounded by new carbon trim. Continuing left, we come to the unchanged flat bottom steering wheel. Moving from left to right, we start with smooth leather at the top that transitions to perforated leather at the indented grip positions. On the left, we then find controls to skip track and voice commands and a volume rotary. Then the bronze Cupra logo centrally, with controls of the instrument cluster to the right. To view the instrument cluster, we first need to turn the car on by depressing the push to start button below. When started, we can also hear the valve controlled exhaust and see the LED lights. Now back inside, and before going through the instrument cluster ahead, we can look at the paddles for the car's 7-speed DSG automatic transmission. Looking ahead, we can now move to the car's 10.25-inch digital cockpit. From left to right, this offers info for engine temperature, engine revs, central info screen, speedo and fuel level. Now taking a closer look at the central portion of the screen, we see it offers a lap timer, Cruise control info, the sat nav, display for the DAB digital radio and phone connectivity options. We can also exit this view and enter vehicle status, then a more angular rev and speed view and finally a centre focus view. This car offers various drive modes, which can be seen at the top of the standard screen, comfort, snow, off-road, individual and Cupra. Now finished with the instrument cluster, we can move up to the large dash that features various speakers and vents. Then moving down in the centre, we come to the 9.2 inch touchscreen for the infotainment system that's now surrounded by carbon. From left to right, we can start the screen for the DAB digital radio with station icons. Media comes next for external devices via AUX, USB and Bluetooth. Next, we can access the navigation screen, which can be pinched and spread to zoom out and in respectively. Destinations can also be input and chosen here, in addition to viewing points of interest. The next screen offers live traffic reports, which can obviously complement the nav system. Sound settings comes after and offers the user the ability to access overall volume, touchscreen tone and the equaliser. 
telephone connectivity for calls and messaging is possible through the following option screen. Vehicle comes after and offers the Eco Trainer screen that provides more detailed efficiency information to encourage the driver to aim for high MPG. We can also access the driving modes here, which we'll see shortly. After this, we come to Full Link, which offers access to third-party integration software such as Android Auto, Apple CarPlay and MirrorLink. The following screen is for media control, which allows the user to remotely control the infotainment system with their smartphone. With a swipe, we can access the screen-based air conditioning system. Here, images and general settings can also be accessed. As mentioned, we can also select from the six driving modes Comfort, Sport, Cupra, Individual, Off-Road and Snow. These modes adjust the car's responsiveness, damping and exhaust. Finally, if the parking button below is pressed, the Park Assist system is displayed and its various views can be utilised. Now taking a closer look at the actual screen, we find touch, direct access controls on the left with the volume rotary, then more direct access controls on the right with the physical option slit rotary below. If we follow the carbon down, we are brought to a button array, parking assist, stop start and on off, parking camera and sensors, hazard lights and airbag lights. Below this, we find controls for the dual zone climate control system that features seat heating and air direction buttons. Moving down, we come to air temperature rotaries on either side with small digital displays. The AC button is in the right rotary, then a central fan speed rotary, and finally, the left zone air temperature rotary with front and rear demiss controls. As we continue down, we come to an open storage area with a 12 volt input, two USB and one AUX inputs. As we move back from this, we come to the gear selector for park, reverse, neutral and drive, and sequential shifting when pushed to the left. Behind this is a larger rotary to easily switch between the car's six drive modes and the electric parking brake to its right. Between the main control array and the armrest behind are two open cup holders. Continuing back and we eventually come to the armrest. The padded top can easily be brought up to fill quite a deep storage area. On either side of the central column we find new adjustable bucket seats upholstered in exclusive blue Alcantara with carbon effect leather on the side bolstering. All movement controls for tilt, up, down and back forward can be found on the outside edge. Now we've finished in the front, we can move to the rear. Starting with the doors, we of course find a similar design to the front, with the opener at the top, but now with a speaker, blue Alcantara upholstery and a single control for the window, with open storage and another speaker below. Now sitting inside, let's take a quick POV look around the rear before we focus on each of the elements individually. When looking down, we find storage to the rear of the front seats. Centrally, there are two manually adjustable vents and below, two USB inputs and a small open storage area. Where we find new seats in the front, the rear comes with the same bench setup as in the standard Cupra Ateca, but here upholstered in the exclusive blue Alcantara and carbon effect detailing. In the middle, we find a central occasional seat that can easily be pulled down by using the tag at the top. And once lowered, we find two open cup holders.
The final feature in the rear is the light switch above for the white LED lights. Now we're finished in the rear, we can move back outside to take a look at the boot. The boot lid can be opened using the button on the key or the button here and needs to be pushed up. In this model, we find a smaller boot offering 485 litres of capacity. This is reduced from 510 litres as a result of the four-wheel drive system creating a higher boot floor. Now taking a closer look around, we find the tyre repair kit to the left with a small access hatch above it. Continuing up, we come to a lever to lower the left rear seat and then further levers for the seats and a central hatch to load long items through. And finally, the lever for the right rear seat. Once finishing the boot, the lid needs to be manually closed. We can now move back to the front to view the car's final features. Looking up, there are large leather upholstered sun visors with illuminated vanity mirrors. Moving centrally, there's a sunglasses case or small storage area, then the microphones, lights and light controls between them. And of course the auto dimming rear view mirror below. So that concludes my Inip exterior and interior tour and exhaust sound video of this 2020 Seat Cupra Ateca Limited Edition. All of Seat and Cupra Letchworth's contact details can be found in the description of the video. Please subscribe for the latest content and until next time, thanks for watching.